This is the Marketing Minute with Eric Rhodes, author of the number one Amazon bestseller, Make More Money Selling Your Art, proven techniques to turn your passion into profit. If you want to make a great living as an artist, you need to listen to this. Now, I, you know, I don't have all the answers, but uh, I have spent my life learning marketing and like most of us, didn't know anything about it until I learned it and I made a lot of mistakes, a lot of very expensive mistakes. And so my goal is to share some of that with you uh, and to help you with your career. So if you have questions, email them to me, eric at artmarketing.com, or you can do... Uh, a video upload if you want to as well. We'd love to see that. Amadine, my producer, is going to read the first question. The first question is from Jenna Boyce from North Carolina. It is not exactly a marketing question, but it is a question that you do receive a lot. How do I overcome the fear of being judged, comparing myself, myself to others? Well, Jenna, get a therapist. Next question. No, no, wait. Uh, just here's my take on this. Because your head has everything to do with your art marketing, I'll I'll take this on. But you know, if you have big, deeper issues, go see a professional. I am not a professional. Um, I went through this and mostly overcame it. I I have some of those issues still. I'll explain in a minute. One day, artist. Uh, Michael Ringer was visiting me, me at the Adirondacks, really great painter, really great guy, very, very high level at the time and higher now. And we were kind of walking through the house and I had a lot of paintings out and I, you know, he'd stop and look at a painting and we'd move on. But I was, you know, I would make excuses for things once in a while. So when he was leaving, he said, Eric, um, do you mind if I just give you a little bit of feedback? I said, sure. What is it? And he said, every painting we walked by that you created, you apologized for it. He said, stop it. Just stop it. He said, you're doing good work. You're where you should be. Uh, you're going to get better. Uh, and accept where you are, accept the fact that you, you are going to grow and stop making apology for your work. You just have to understand that this is where you are at the moment. And if you're comparing yourself to me, hey, I went through this too. So that was one of the sweetest, most considerate things anybody's ever done for me to actually take the time to say something to me about that. So I caught myself uh, for years after that, I would start to make an excuse, you know, if somebody would be walking by a painting, I'd say, oh, I need to redo that, or oh, I don't like the clouds, or oh, you know, uh, you know, I wish I were better, and and I just would bite my tongue and stop it, and it felt better when I bit my tongue, and I got to the point where I stopped making excuses most of the time. Once in a while, I will still do it, but I have to catch myself and stop doing it. I Look, um, we all started out. We all did paintings we didn't love. We uh, we have to look at each painting as progress. We're learning something from each painting. You know, not every painting is going to be perfect. By the way, not every painting, every artist who's well known is perfect. You know, um, you've just got to get the practice. You know, Kevin McPherson talks about you know go out and paint a hundred plein air paintings, small ones, in thirty minutes or less, just to get practice. So. You just got to stop the negative self-talk. You got to stop apologizing. Um, and I looked this up, just curious. I went to psychology today and they said this, measuring yourself against others is modus operandi of the human mind. And in some ways it can be helpful. The inspiration you feel about someone else's achievements can either rev you up uh, to improve your own life uh, or the recognition that your abilities are a notch above someone else can actually give you a boost to your self-esteem. But comparisons can be harmful when they leave you feeling chronically inferior or depressed. People aren't uniformly at risk of negative social comparison. Unsurprisingly, those with low self-esteem are more likely to feel that they don't stack up when we're reliant on others for our sense of self, only feeling good if we get positive feedback or markers of status we're at risk for depression. So let that be a lesson. Go get a therapist if that's the case. But look, the worst that can happen is that you are judged. I mean, if you enter an art show, what happens? You're judged. 
and you're judged fairly or unfairly or badly or good, but you're judged. If you compare yourself to other artists, uh, you know, who are you comparing yourself? Are you comparing yourself to Rembrandt or to Edgar Payne or to somebody at that level? How do we ever get there in our lifetime? Some people do, some people don't. Uh, but, uh, you know, are you comparing yourself to Monet? Are you comparing yourself to another painter in your friend group? Who are you painting, uh, comparing yourself to? I sat up and painted two different times next to Richard Schmidt, the great artist. One time was in the garden and I sat up next to him so I could watch him paint, but I had, I, he wouldn't let me watch, he wouldn't let me just watch him paint. He said, you've got to paint and I want to see what you're doing. Well, there's nothing like pressure like that. And sometimes that pressure is good because I felt like I really did for myself at the time, a pretty decent painting. I look back now and maybe it wasn't good. And then another time I painted a portrait standing right be beside him or behind him. And I was kind of monitoring what he did and I do what he did. And, and then he came up to me afterwards. He said, I didn't know you were such a good artist. And that was a nice compliment. And, and, well, I said, well, it's because I copied every brushstroke. He said, nonsense. You were able to pull this off. That, that's really nice. So, you know, I was a little reluctant to, to let him see it, to let him do it, but I did it. Uh, and you've got to put yourself out there. And what I find, I get a, a, a wonderful opportunity to paint with a lot of artists. And I find that uh, it can be intimidating. But what I do is I do not go look at their work while I'm painting. They may come over and look at mine. I don't go at the, look at theirs because here's what happens. I'll go, oh, I like the way they did that lead in. And then I'll come back and change my painting. And, and that's the kiss of death. You don't want to do that. So I just, you know, I will look at their work afterwards once I'm done, but I don't do it in the meantime. And I think that, um, you know, sometimes comparison is a real good thing. It, it drives you, you know, when you know there's a good painter uh, next to you. I had some buddies up painting this past summer. I wanted to really pull out my best because I wanted to look good, right? I, that's not unusual, but nobody was critical. And, and you know, once in a while, somebody come up and say, hey, I've got some ideas for you. Or sometimes I go up to them and I say, I've got some ideas for you. You know, we can all see things in other people's work that we can't see in ourselves. So um, help strive to be better, you know, try to set yourself to a new standard to get to a higher level, but don't worry about it. Don't compare yourself to others in a negative way embrace it. As an artist, you are unique. You're a unique individual. Embrace yourself, embrace your struggle, embrace the hard work to get better, and know that people that are better than you went through this. They struggled. They did paintings they weren't happy with. Their paintings stunk, and they probably compared themselves to others at the time, too. It's a real natural thing. It's okay unless it's hurting you in some way. You know, for instance, if you decided to stop painting because you felt so bad about what you were doing, that's just stupid. All right. So I was in the studio the other day and I messed up a painting I'd been working on for two years, a big painting. And, you know, I, I had, uh, I got a little too bold and I was tired and I started making some big mistakes and I really screwed up this painting. So I wiped all the paint that I had just done down. Well, thankfully, of course, the dry painting underneath it was still there. And what ended up happening is that paint smeared created this incredible atmosphere. And then what I did is I was just able to wipe out parts of it with my paper towel and retain some of the parts that I wanted. And then I painted on top of that. And I ended up doing one of the best paintings I've ever done. So, you know, it's going to happen. You're going to you're going to have mistakes and sometimes mistakes lead to better things. Don't beat yourself up. Manage your self-talk. Treat yourself with respect. You would not tell someone else that they're painting was awful. Don't tell yourself that your painting's awful. Just tell yourself, look, I can do better. That's fine. I will get better. Uh, this is a learning experience. I know that every artist, even the best ones, have messed things up from time to time. That's part of the deal. Just deal with it. All right, next question. The next question is from Richard Mark Stone. Sorry about that, from Colorado. For people with successful non-artistic jobs, careers, who would love to make art for a living, but are fearful, what would you say to them? Okay, so what would I say to somebody who is not an artist, but thinks that they, and they're already successful, they think that they would like to uh, become a successful artist? I'd say, go for it, man, go for it. Um, 
this is kind of like head trash day, right? That we're dealing with the head today. <laughs> Look, why be fearful, Rich? Let me ask you this. If you decided to switch careers, I don't know what you do for a living, but let's say that you're a woodworker and that you decide you want to become a fireman. Uh, would you fear becoming a fireman? Well, you might a little, but what do you fear really? You fear the unknown. You fear uh, because you don't know what you don't know. But uh, mostly you would tell yourself, look, I don't know this, but I can get trained on it. And once I'm trained on it, I can practice it. And once I practice it, I'm going to get good at it. And you're going to apply for a job and you're going to get a job as a fireman, right? Well, what's the difference really as an artist? It's no different, uh, except you're not applying for a job because you're self-employed all of a sudden. So what you might fear is quitting your existing job to become an artist when you're unproven, not knowing if you have the ability to paint or sculpt, which you do. It's just a matter of time and not knowing if you can sell your work. So in my art marketing videos and what I've often taught at the convention, on air convention, is I often talk about being practical, practical about these things. In other words, you know, if you decide you want to quit your job and become an artist, uh, you know, you're, it's going to take you some time to learn to be an artist and to get good. I don't know how long it's going to take you. Everybody's different. But let's say it takes you five years. You don't want to quit your job. And let's say you have a job and a good job and you're learning to be an artist and you have to take the time to do that while you have your job. And then you don't want to just say, OK, now I'm good at an art, at good at being an artist. I think now I'll go start selling my paintings. Don't quit your job. The goal is get used to painting, get used to selling paintings, get some proof that your stuff is going to sell consistently and then get to a level of income that you're comfortable even though you're working hard because you're really working two jobs now, get to a level where you're comfortable and that you know you can reproduce that level of sales month after month after month after month. And once you've proven it for six months or a year, if that's when you want to quit your job, maybe don't do it. Maybe go to part time. Say, OK, you know, I'm going to a, a friend of mine did this. Uh, a friend of mine was a physicist. He's a brilliant painter. And he had a good job, but he said, OK, I'm going to go to I'm going to start taking uh, a quarter of my time off from work and then putting that towards painting. And then after a while, it was half of my time. And then after a while, it was three quarters of my time. And eventually he stopped the one job. By the time he got the other one going, he was making plenty of money doing 30, 40 workshops a year, making, you know, making bank. And so he was stable. And that's what you want to go for is you want to be stable. So um, anyway, uh, if you have the passion to become an artist, don't tell yourself that you don't have the talent or the skills. That's crazy. Everybody can do this. You just have to learn it. You have to get taught. I have trained or my company has trained hundreds of thousands of people through our, uh, our video uh, library called painttube.tv. We've trained millions of people, or at least a million people, on the Art School Live Daily on YouTube. We have uh, taught a lot of people to paint who didn't think they could, who figured it out because they got the proper training. You know, doing it on your own is, it's okay. A lot of people are self-taught, but you can burn a lot of time that way. You can speed it up when you get somebody good to teach you. If you can get a good local instructor, that's the best way. Uh, you get good national instruction, good workshops, good videos, things like that. That's going to make a difference. And then get good at learning to sell and learning to market yourself. Those are critical parts of the process. Well, this has kind of been head trash day. So I guess I should be getting $100 an hour for each of these. Uh, next patient. <laughs> okay. Look, your, your head is your worst enemy. And it's also your best friend. Your brain wants to default to the negative. It's natural but you have to stop it. You have to constantly tell yourself, that's not like me. I am not a negative thinker. I am not going to think negatively. I've got some great books to recommend. They're classics. They're really still true. Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill, Psycho Cybernetics, Ma Maxwell Maltz, uh, Unleash the Power Within, Tony Robbins. Go to a Tony Robbins event. It's not what you think it is. It's, it's not all positive thinking. There's a lot of science behind it. Uh, I've been to a couple of them. They've been very helpful to me. Um, look, we'll put links to those in the show notes, but take 
time to learn how to become a positive thinker. You know, your body reacts to your thoughts and your, your body or your mind finds what your thoughts are saying. If you say, it looks like it's going to rain, you're going to find rain. If you say, it looks like it's going to be a beautiful day, you're going to find a beautiful day. Now, I, I, you know, you're not going to change the weather, but the I, you get the point here is you've got to look for the positive spin on everything. You can't be telling yourself you can't do this. You can do this. You know, you just don't know how. All right. Anyway, your mindset controls your success. These are things uh, that will control the course of your future and your action and help you become what you want to be. A little prayer never hurts either, too. Okay. That's today's Psychology Minute. I mean, Art Marketing Minute. This has been the Marketing Minute with Eric Rhodes. You can learn more at artmarketing.com.